we just had what for me was a forced march straight up a mountain and then we got up on this bank and this blow down there's uh, a couple two tracks right in front of us a pond to the left apparently the water buffalo often come across from the far ridge cut somewhere around this pond sometimes in these two tracks and the work on back there's a field back uh, behind me a ways and there's a ridge back here also that sometimes they follow so hopefully they will go with that fairly normal routine and we'll get a good shot here without them knowing we're around. Uh, got the crossbow set up. I just took some readings with the range finder so I know what ranges we have right here. Uh, hopefully we'll get a good clean shot like I said without them knowing we're around. Probably there won't be a problem but sometimes you uh, just like poking a bear, you poke a water buffalo and you, you can have some trouble. Wow, this is one big animal. It's an Asian water buffalo. Got it with one shot, obviously with the, com uh, not the compound, the uh, crossbow here. Hit it in here. We'll take a look at it later, see exactly where the arrow went. I was using a Knapp Spitfire mechanical broadhead. I don't know if they're necessarily recommended for water buffalo, but it's what I used in this case. Man, look at the size of this animal. That is no white-tailed deer. Very impressive animal. I think sometimes when you're shooting a big game like that, particularly when when you don't have a lot of time, you know, the animal's moving. I think that as much as you try to envision it in advance and know where you're gonna have your shot placement and all that, which is good. When it comes to the moment, I think instinctively sometimes that takes over. And instead of using your head, it's just the flow and you get a better shot you automatically place it better than trying to think it out. <laughs> 